All right, so I've got a bit of a problem. So we've just hit 2 million subscribers on this channel and my team has doubled in size and I've just moved to this nice new place in London. And by all accounts, life is genuinely pretty great. But I've recently been reading a lot about the concept of self-acceptance and I've realized that I don't really have a good relationship with that. Apparently, true self-acceptance is about embracing who we are without any qualifications, conditions, or exceptions. This doesn't mean just embracing the good, positive things about ourselves, but also accepting and embracing the less desirable, the negative, the uglier parts of ourselves. Now, if you're watching this channel, you're probably a bit like me in that you care about self-improvement and becoming a better version of ourselves and all that fun stuff. But as Robert Holden famously writes, no amount of self-improvement can make up for any lack of self-acceptance. Anyway, here are the five methods and they conveniently spell out a nice little acronym which doesn't quite match with what the words are, but whatever. Method number one is to practice relaxed awareness. The first exercise is all about building an awareness of our existence and the stream of phenomena happening at this moment, including our thoughts and our emotions and outside stimuli. I read that online. That all sounds like really, really wishy-washy, but basically this is about meditating and recognizing and just sort of generally being more aware of our own thoughts. To practice, the idea is that you close your eyes for a minute and instead of pushing thoughts away or trying to focus on your breath, just softly notice your thoughts and feelings and body. You might see negative thoughts or emotions, that's totally okay. Just notice them, watch them. Don't try to turn them into positive thoughts or push them away. This is sort of meditation, at least in my current like new beginner level understanding of meditation. I've been dabbling with Headspace and with Sam Harris's Waking Up app. Uh, I haven't yet got a proper meditation practice down, but it's on the cards. One of those things I really, one of those habits I really want to build. And I have genuinely found that on those, on those few occasions where I actually actually bring myself to meditate or to just kind of sit in silence for like 10 minutes and just kind of think about my own thoughts. That's been like genuinely helpful and it's made the rest of the day feel a bit better, um, which begs the question of why don't I do this more often, but hey, it's it's something I'm working on. Method number two is to let go of rating yourself. Now, this is generally a bad thing for us to do, like rating ourselves and comparing ourselves to other people. And I always thought that like, oh, I don't really do that. I'm comfortable in my own skin. But then when I've been reading about the self-acceptance stuff and being more aware of it, I realized that I actually do it all the time. Like anytime I'm on my Instagram explore page and I see these kind of photos of dudes with six pack abs, part of me thinks, oh, you know, those abs are really cool. I really want to get abs like that. And if that was the only thing I took away from it, that wouldn't be too bad. But there is another subconscious like undercurrent when I think that, which is, my current body shape on my body composition is not good enough. And to become more good enough, to become more better, I need to, I don't know, get 12% body fat, I need to do all these exercises. It becomes a very like ratingy comparative type thing. And so I'm trying to eliminate the rating part while retaining the inspiration part. Method number three is to practice gratitude. This is a pretty classic one. There's so much evidence that just being more grateful in general is amazing for our happiness. In fact, there's one study that showed that gratitude journaling i.e. just writing down a few things you're grateful for each day, that does as much to increase our happiness as doubling our salary. I think I do a pretty good job of this because um, I have like a sort of daily journaling practice using the app day one, which is very good. And I do always ask myself, what are three things that I'm grateful for? But since reading about the self-acceptance stuff, again, I realized that always the three things I'm grateful for are always about other people or other things like coffee or this desk setup or this house or Sheen or Angus or these, you know, these other people in my life, for example. And I realized that I never ever have any gratitude towards like anything related to myself. <laughs> like it's just not a, a, a thought that passes my mind at all. And so because I like rules and regulations and trying to cultivate more of this sense of self-acceptance, I've now set a rule for myself that anytime I do this three things gratitude exercise, at least one of those things has to be something about me personally, like, I don't know, my health or the way I deal with problems or even like a failure that I've had in life that has been helpful for me, but just something a little bit more inward looking rather than outward looking. Method number four is to understand forgiveness and compassion. The idea is that as we notice judgments and self-rating, we can try to turn them into forgiveness and compassion. If we judge ourselves for not doing well at something or not being good enough at something, can we forgive ourselves for this just as we might forgive someone else? And then ultimately, in an ideal world, we wouldn't need, even need to forgive ourselves for having shortcomings or for making mistakes or not doing something to our standards because we would recognize that we're all human. Humans are all imperfect. It's actually totally okay. We're doing our best given what we know, given what our skills are, given the environment we were, we were brought up in. I was talking to Stephen Bartlett in one of our podcast interviews, link in the video description, and he makes a really good point about this, about how we're all fundamentally imperfect as human beings and we're all just trying our best. And if we have that lens of looking at the world and looking at ourselves, we would beat ourselves up a lot less. So again, something I'm trying to get better at. And finally, method number five is to separate from your emotions. The idea here is that when you're feeling negative emotions, see them as a separate event, not a part of you. Remove their power over you by thinking of them, not as commandments that you must follow or believe in, but rather as passing objects, like a leaf floating past you in the wind. 
The leaf doesn't control you and neither do the negative emotions. That's a theory anyway, and I think I'm actually pretty good at this. Uh, I've been drinking the Stoicism Kool-Aid for the last like eight years. Darren Brown's Happy, uh, William Irvine's Guide to the Good Life, and Ryan Holiday's the Obstacle is the Way. Those are really good books about Stoicism. And if you like, you can even check out my Skillshare class that I've done with my friend Sam, which is all about how the lessons from Stoicism changed our lives. Sam is a philosophy teacher. There'll be a free access link to that in the video description, not sponsored, etc., etc. but like, you know, People have said that that stoicism Skillshare class is kind of helpful. Um, but yeah, I think I think I do do a pretty good job of like dissociating my self-esteem and my self-acceptance from what I'm currently feeling emotion-wise. But then in fairness, I also, I've had a pretty chill, privileged life and I haven't really had any major knocks on my emotions or like major negative things happen to me. So who knows, maybe if and when that happens, uh, we'll see if the stoicism training is actually useful or if I'm just sort of bullshitting myself and it's all just talk. Anyway, those are the five methods that I'm trying to use more of these days to cultivate more of a sense of self-acceptance. I'll be honest, this is a pretty new era for me. I, you know, a few months ago, I wouldn't have given any of this the time of day. I don't even know what we're going to title this video because like, ugh, it's not about productivity, but that's fine. And I'm quite excited because it's like, this feels like a new area of life, a new area of growth <laughs> where I'm coming across all these concepts like self-love and self-acceptance and compassion and forgiveness and all these things that I just really wouldn't have paid any attention to before. And I'm trying to do things like meditation and dabbling with yoga and, you know, trying to just become a bit more spiritual, a bit more in touch with my emotions, a bit more in touch with myself. Sort of have my ex-housemate Sheen to thank for that. She's turned me on to a lot of these ideas. But as usual, as I learn this stuff myself, I will of course be sharing what I've learned with you guys on the channel. So yeah, huge thank you for following along the journey. Really grateful that you've given the time to be here watching to the end of this video. If you like this video and you want to learn more about this whole like separating from emotions thing, there is a video over there, which is 10 quotes from Stoicism that have changed my life that I think about on a semi-daily basis. So thank you so much for watching. Do hit the subscribe button if you aren't already and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.